morning. Uh, your hymnal or your now, uh, bulletin probably says I'm going to process in, but uh, no acolytes, so we'll do things out of order, right? It's Christmas. Uh, welcome. Good to have you here this uh, Christmas morning as we uh, gather together as the people of God to celebrate the birth of Christ, the Word made flesh, uh, full of grace and truth. Uh, the only announcement that I have for you this morning is that uh, regardless of what your bulletin says, I put the wrong number in it when I put the bulletin together. So it's number 56, which is uh, listed up here. So uh, with that, we will sing our opening hymn on page 56, The First Noel. <laughs>
Sing to God something brand new. For God has done wonderful things. God has not forgotten to love us all. Even the ends of the earth have heard. Make a joyful noise. Bring forth in song. With strings and horns, sing praise to the Holy One. With the glory and sea and everything in it. With all the land and everything in it. The hills sing for joy. Thank God. God is coming to set everything right. Justice for everyone, everything fair. Sing to God something brand new. For God has done wonderful things. Let us confess our sins uh, together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, imploring him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a troubled and penitent sinner, confess to you all my sins and iniquities with which I have offended you and for which I justly deserve your punishment. But I am sorry for them, and repent of them, and pray for your boundless mercy, for the sake of the suffering and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Forgive my sins, give me your Holy Spirit for the amendment of my sinful life and bring me to life everlasting. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you. In his stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We will sing together uh, the first two verses of Joy to the World. Let us pray together. Almighty God, you have made yourself known to us in your Son, Jesus Christ, Redeemer of the world. We give thanks that through his birth and death, you have set us free from the slavery of our sin. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'd like to invite the children forward uh, as together we sing uh, the first verse of Away in a Manger.
I want to know, have you guys ever seen A Christmas Story, the movie, with Ralphie? No? Oh, you're going to have to show it to him. Jeff was telling me he was watching it last night. Okay, which channel? TNT? Okay, I'm going to have to buy it. I don't have cable, but I, I want to see it. So maybe we'll have to watch it together, huh? Well, in this movie, there is a, a, a little boy. Uh, his name is Ralphie. Uh, and what does he want more than anything else for Christmas? He wants a BB gun. Uh, but what do you think that his mom and his teacher and even Santa Claus said about him getting a BB gun? What did you think he said? They said, you're going to shoot your eye out, right? You're going to shoot your eye. You've heard this before, right? Or it's all fun and games until somebody loses an eye or gets their eye poked out, right? So he asks for it. He wants it so bad. And guess what happens? Well, he never asked his dad for it. He was kind of afraid of his dad. Never asked dad if he could have it. And guess what? His dad gave him on Christmas, a BB gun. And he didn't give him any rules. He didn't get, do anything. Just he went outside, and guess what almost happened? He almost shot his eye out. But he didn't. Uh, well, the gospel's kind of like this, right? Grace is kind of like this. We have God, who is our Father, and, well, sometimes we're a little scared of him, right? We're scared. Uh, we, we're not sure that we can ask him for things. We're not sure what he's going to say. And guess what happens? God gives us what we want, actually what we need most, right? He gives us his grace. He forgives us. He sets us free and he sends us out, and we might shoot our eyes out, right? We might actually shoot our eyes out, uh, and yet we have this grace that sets us free, and a Father who loves us more than anything else. And this is the gift on Christmas. Jesus, who is our gift of grace, our reading today says, grace upon grace comes from Jesus Christ. And so the forgiveness of sins, this is our great gift. God says, no matter what, I forgive you. I set you free. Go out, go play. Uh, and know that I am here for you always to the end of the age. Will you guys pray with me? Dear Jesus, thank you for being our grace. Thank you for being our grace. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us. So much that you have forgiven us. So much that you have forgiven us. Through your own precious blood. Through your own precious blood. Keep us safe over the holidays. Keep us safe over the holidays. And bless our families. Amen. Great. Well, you, I don't have BB guns for you guys. I'm sorry, but you can grab a little treat uh, in the basket as you go back to your families.
first lesson is Isaiah 52, 7 through 10. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your sentinels lift up their voices. Together they sing for joy, for in plain sight they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. second lesson is Hebrews 1, 1 through 6. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he has created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being. And he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited in more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son, today, today I have begotten you, or again, I will be his father and he will be my son, and again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all God's angels worship him.
The Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave the power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law, indeed, was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So are there any fans here of uh, the movie, A Christmas Story? Uh, It's a low-budget Christmas comedy about, as we said in the children's sermon, a kid who wants a BB gun. But then again, it's so much more. Uh, As a pastor friend of mine, who I have liberally ripped off for this sermon, Uh, Daniel Emery Price uh, recently wrote, it's a movie about a good father that gives his son a gift no one else trusts him with. Now it's true that Ralphie wants a Red Ryder BB gun throughout the entire movie. At every turn he's told it's too dangerous, that he can't be trusted with such a gift. He's not mature enough yet. His mother, teacher, and even Santa Claus tell him, you'll shoot your eye out. But Ralphie never asks his father. Several times in the film, it's evident that Ralphie is somewhat fearful of his father, that he views him as harsh and hard. This image, he has blown blown apart at the end when he's surprised by his dad with a gift no one else would trust him with. His dad gives it to him in fatherly pride and joy with no warnings or caveats. And Christmas is the celebration of God gifting his son to the world. A God we often view as harsh and hard, giving us a gift we never thought to ask him for. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. From his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. The unmerited favor of God. The gift comes with no strings attached No stipulations or warnings, we only receive it. Some will be afraid of what we'll do with such a gift. We like the concept of grace in theory, but not so much in practice. Surely we need some rules for this gift. 
Are we mature enough to receive it? Are we responsible enough? Or will we shoot our eye out? We might. Ralphie almost does when he, in joyful zeal, immediately runs outside to try out this awesome present. But like his father, our father wants us to have the gift. It's his joy to give it to us. He's willing to take the risk. The gracious gift comes to us first, most of us at least, first of all in baptism. And baptism, which the, this prefigured now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Did you hear that? Not as a removal of dirt from the body. It doesn't clean off the outside. The outside where we can see that the filth has been removed. And we want to see grace, don't we? We want to see it in action, see it changing lives. This is why we love a good testimony. I was lost once, once I was lost, but now I'm found. I used to do bad things, but now I've turned my life around. Have you ever noticed how the, in the story of the prodigal son, we don't get to hear what the son does after he comes home? How many times do you think that the father had to welcome him back again? In this Christian church, day after day, he fully forgives my sins and the sins of all believers. From his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace, day after day, grace upon grace. Yet when Jesus came bearing this gift for us, grace, by forgiving our sins, we would not have it. And so we hung him on the cross. Now God wasn't surprised. He knew that he had given us a gift that he couldn't trust us with. And yet he gave it anyway, because it was the only way. Christmas is the story of a good father giving his children a gift that no one else trusts them with. The gift comes with no strings attached, no stipulations or warnings. You only receive it. In the stead of Christ and by his command, I forgive you all your sins. The gift of total freedom in and for the sake of Christ. There's nothing left to do, so go, be free. And you know where you can find me if you need to come crying to me because somebody shot their eye out. Amen.
I invite you to please rise as you are able, as together we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uh, we will now receive our offering. You may be seated. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Father in heaven, with great joy and humble awe, we acknowledge your dear Son to be the Word made flesh. We rejoice that because he is now our brother, we have become your sons and daughters in our baptism. Keep us, your children, in true faith in you, and in fervent love towards one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, give us joy in serving you. Your son gladly served you by his humble willingness to honor his earthly parents, growing in wisdom and knowledge and taking his place in daily life. 
Teach us to rejoice in our daily lives and callings in our homes, our work, our land, and your church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, the great mystery of the Incarnation was first believed and proclaimed by common men and women, Mary and Joseph and the shepherds. Give us confidence to tell the joyful message of our Savior's birth, life, death, and resurrection, that your gracious work done through the Holy Spirit may, may create faith in those whom you will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, guide all who administer and judge our laws in this land. Preserve us in justice and truth and make us faithful citizens honoring those in authority over us. Wherever rulers spurn your calling to serve justly, are hostile to your truth and persecute your people, turn them from their evil and protect your church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, you sent Jesus to serve the poor and forgotten before the wealthy and powerful. Keep us from false, con false confidence in the earthly blessings you bestow and fill our hearts with generous love towards the destitute and the suffering that they may see Christ's love in ours. Visit and relieve the sick and the injured, especially Sherry Fanger, Mary Hollis Sternberg, Kevin Schwartz, Ellen Amsden, Peggy Brevold, Mike Rogotsky, and Alice Trebish. Help them according to, heal them according to your mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, keep us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive now this blessing. God, the creator who delights in you, Jesus, the savior, who was born and died for you, and the life-giving spirit who shines on you, bless you, and keep you in hope, faith, and peace. Amen. Our closing hymn is on page 55, Good Christian Friends Rejoice. Mm -hmm. 